In this unit, we're going to cover two primary topics. The first is going to be initiating our project. So, you know, previously I talked about that overall strategy of projects and, you know, how we choose what we're going to be doing. Uh, now we get to the point where we've assumed that we know a broad project area, right? I keep talking about that accounts receivable system, right? Maybe we know that we need to, to have some project to do a, a global accounts receivable system for the entire organization, maybe, right? So now we know that we have to do something. Now we know that we have to initiate this process to start. And this is really that first major step that we're taking into the software development life cycle. So now we're taking that first solid footing. We're getting our first solid footing into the SDLC, the software development life cycle or systems development life cycle. So first I'm going to talk about initiating the project. Some of the, some of the first things we need to do in, on the analysis side and the systems development life cycle side, uh, aside from the project management. And then I'm going to talk about, in the second part of this, uh, of this slide deck, I'm going to talk about the feasibility analysis. Uh, and finally, I'll talk a little bit about the uh, baseline project plan and, and what that would look like. But basically, the baseline project plan is going to be based on the uh, feasibility analysis and the feasibility study, and will also contain elements from the uh, project initiations. In other words, you're going to start that project initiation. We're going to create some documentation around that. Then we're going to do our feasibility analysis, create some documentation around that, and then that becomes our baseline project plan to say, here's what we're doing, here's how we're starting it, and here's why we're choosing to do it in this way, uh, based on that feasibility analysis. So let's get started. So again, we're going to describe the steps involved in initiating and planning the, uh, the project. We're going to list and describe various methods for assessing the feasibility of doing a project. And then I'm going to talk about the baseline project plan. So again, we're solidly still in the planning phase here, the last couple slide decks. I know it feels like we've been stuck in planning forever here, which uh, it isn't all that unlike a, uh, a real project. You know, there's a lot of planning on the front end for a large systems development project. But we're going to start here. So, uh, so we're still in that phase. We're still in that planning phase overall. Uh, so initiating a planning and systems development project, we have to, so what must be considered when making the decision uh, on the division between the project initiation and planning. So this goes back to my last slide where I said it feels like we've been on this planning uh, uh, phase forever in this topic, right? In this slide deck's topic in, in YouTube, if you're watching this on YouTube, um, I've, I've spent probably the last you know two hours of slide decks just talking about the project uh, initiation and the project planning phase. Um, so you know we, we, how much is too much, right? Um, planning is obviously pretty important. So. We do need to spend a considerable amount of effort uh, just doing our initiation and project planning. Um, that really sets the table for the rest of the project. And what you're going to see with systems analysis and design is there's a lot of setting the table for the future. We spend a lot of time planning up front because that planning sets the stage for our analysis. Then we spend a tremendous amount of time doing analysis. This is another phase where you're going to say, geez, Brian, we've been on this analysis phase forever. When do we actually start to get designed something? Uh, we're not actually designing anything for a long time. And that's because we need to set the stage to get that to, to that design phase. And then likewise, we spend some time designing so that when we get to that implementation phase, we're not doing any designing. We're not doing any analysis, right? So for example, when we get to the analysis phase of our project, which we're going to be talking about in the next uh, slide deck after this one. So we're going to get there in the next slide deck. Um, but when we're in that analysis phase, we should no longer be doing any planning. We should be past the stage of planning. We should, we should have a good idea of what we're doing, why we're doing it, and the reason behind doing it, right? All that stuff should be well established by the time you get to that analysis phase. If it's not, then there's some problem that has to be identified. Um, so who is responsible for performing this? We're going to talk about that. And why is it such a challenging activity? So the process of uh, planning um, so, so what we're going to start out by doing, we're going to establish the project initiation team. Uh, we're going to establish a relationship with the customer, make sure we're in communication with the customer. They know, you know, that they have accurate expectations. The customer, by the way, could either be us as a vendor, our customer, or it could be, you know, an internal, um, uh, customer, a customer within our organization that, um, to whom we're answering to for this project. And then we're going to start the uh, project initiation plan, uh, establish the management procedures. Uh, establish the project management environment and the project work group, which I've already talked about in the project management slide. So we talked about how project management works. This is that overlap with project management, right? So the, the establishing procedures, initiating the plan and creating the workbook, that's all going to be 
up to the project manager unless the systems analyst is doing the project managing. And then we create a project charter, which basically the charter is what gives the authority to move forward with the project. You have to have a good charter in order to move forward with the project. So the process of initiating the planning, so the key activity of project planning is going to be defining clear, discrete activities and the work needed to complete each activity within a single project. So that's our work breakdown structure, right? Again, something we do in the project management side, but mentioning it here again, since now we're talking about planning in the, it, it, with reference to the, uh, to the systems analysis software development lifecycle or systems development lifecycle. The objective of the planning process is the development of the baseline project plan, which I'm going to talk about at the end of this slide deck. So I'll come back to what the baseline project plan is, uh, but that's the end game here. We're doing all of this work so that we have a baseline project plan, which then sets the stage for us to move into our analysis phase, which we're going to get to in the next slide deck after this one. Um, so the business case, basically the business case is a justification for an information systems project. Uh, it's going to be presented in terms of tangible and intangible benefits and costs for economic benefits and costs. We're also going to do feasibility analysis for technical and organizational feasibility. Uh, and we'll talk about some other feasibilities as well later on. Uh, so, so the, again, the baseline project plan is basically justifying the project by uh, using the feasibility analysis and that overall strategic uh, competitive advantage stuff that I talked about in the previous uh, section, uh, you know, the previous slide deck, all of that stuff would play into that baseline project, it would all feed into that baseline project plan um, and would inform the baseline project plan. So we're going to describe the project scope and we're also going to talk about the alternatives that we considered uh, as well as the uh, feasibility of the project. And we're going to divide the project into tasks and we're going to talk about those tasks, uh, make sure they're well understood. Uh, we're going we're gonna to estimate the resource requirements, uh, create some kind of a plan around those resources, and we're going to develop a preliminary schedule as well as a communication plan. Again, a lot of this overlaps with project management activities. And we can use the same tools that we talked about in project management. This is where you would break out the work breakdown structure, the network diagram, the Gantt chart, all that stuff that you've learned how to do previously. So the elements of project planning, uh, you're going to determine standards and procedures, identify and assess risk, create preliminary budgets, uh, development a statement of work, um, set a baseline project plan, right? So all of this stuff is going to happen uh, in this planning phase. And the outcome or the deliverable of all of this is going to be the baseline project plan. This is the, uh, the major outcome. This is sort of the end game to the, uh, to the planning uh, phase of the SDLC. Uh, so it contains the best estimate of the project scope, the benefits we're going to get, the costs we're going to incur, what the risks are, how we're going to mitigate those risks, and resource requirements. Now sometimes in a course like this I will ask students to write a baseline project plan. So you know at this stage in some versions of a course like this I'll say okay everybody get into a group and everyone's going to create a baseline project plan. Um, as you probably can guess uh, in this uh, version of the course what I'm doing is uh, breaking that into pieces for you where you're just doing, uh, you know, pieces of these different things. So I'm going to have you take, uh, I'm going to have you do a feasibility analysis study on a, uh, on a project uh, that isn't real, right? So I'm going to give you a scenario and I'm going to ask you to do that feasibility analysis. Uh, and I'm also going to give you a scenario with a feasibility analysis and ask you to assess that feasibility analysis. I'm going to ask you to tell me, is this feasibility analysis in your judgment did, does it, you know, does it meet the requirements uh, as a feasibility analysis? Does it, um, did they choose the right project? Uh, was there any error in their judgment based on what you see in that uh, uh, baseline project plan? So that's kind of how I'm going to approach this. Uh, you'll also generally have a project scope statement, which lays out the scope early in the project. Uh, scope is very important. I talked about scope creep, I think, before. If you're not familiar with the term, scope creep is when projects tend to um, uh, expand in scope uh, when they're not supposed to, right? So, and here's what happens. Sometimes uh, the scope is, you know, people bolt on additional functionality because they say, well, we're already this far into development. We might as well do this other stuff. And, um, and that just keeps happening. And then the project never ends. So a lot of times we have to go back to our original project scope statement and say, look, this is what our charter was. This is what we were, set, what we were setting out to do. And we are going to meet this goal first, and then we'll do a different project to meet these additional scopes, uh, these additional goals that you're asking for. And sometimes it takes a little bit of politics to make that happen in a, uh, uh, in a meaningful way. 
Um, so it's also going to outline any uh, high-level work that's required to complete the project. All right, so I'm going to pause this here, and the next video is going to talk about the feasibility, so doing that project feasibility analysis.